So today we're going to talk about uh, basically the, the very first step. So say you have an idea. Everybody's got ideas. How do you determine what's a good idea, what's a bad idea, and, and you know, what does that conversation look like and what's that scale in between? So there's a five-step process that I use to evaluate when I'm you know, out and I have an idea and I'm like, oh, this would be great. I run it through these five filters so that by the end of it, I can determine, okay, is this actually a really good idea? Like in, in real life at scale, or is it just a, a good idea that sounds good like when you're drinking or on paper, but it doesn't really work in reality. So I wanna share these five things with you because they've been super helpful for me. So the first thing I ask myself is, is how big can it possibly get, right? So if you got an idea for, you know, is it uh, a, a local restaurant and it's only gonna impact, you know, one, one zip code or something like that, or is it something big and world changing like, like Facebook or Instagram or, uh, you know, some kind of app that, that changes the way we look at the world. So how, how big can it possibly get? And there's no right or wrong answer to that. Neither is, none of us is better or worse than the other. It's just you have to have a very clear picture of what it looks like so you can determine whether you wanna move forward with it. So number one, ask myself how big can it possibly get? Uh, number two, how long will it take me to reach that stage in the business? Is it something that's gonna take 30 years to develop and I'm gonna have to spend you know, the rest of my lifetime building this? Or is this something that I can put three months into and get you know, to profitability and then three years get to the scale that I wanna to get to? So look at how long it's gonna take you uh, on that, that time horizon. Um, and not just, not just time, but also your personal bandwidth. Like how involved are you gonna to have to be personally in the project? What is your day-to-day -day commitment of time look like to that? Is this something that you can, you know, allocate, you know, 10% of your, you know, profit a month and just have somebody else build it and scale it? Or is this something that's going to take up, you know, 80% of your bandwidth for the next three months or three years or five years or whatever that is? So, but whatever that looks like, it's very important that you know ahead of time uh, what it is before you can determine whether you actually want to step into that or not. Uh, number three is how much it will cost to start, meaning like, to, to, to really get it rolling to the edge of profitability. Um, <clears throat> when Mike and I were starting Forge Clothing back in 2007, we were both buzz instructors at the time. We were hanging out in third phase and you know doing the buzz instructor thing, having a great time, drinking on the weekends. and, and uh, But we didn't have a whole lot of freedom, so we wanted to find something that we could do that would be uh, fun, exciting, and also profitable and, and you know make us some money. I was tired of being poor. So we had a whole bunch of business ideas. We had probably a dozen different ideas and clothing line was actually the very last idea. I think every every tactical person, especially team guys, because our egos are so big, everybody needs to know what we know, right? Everybody needs to to want to be a part of this. So our, our first idea was we're going to have like a tactical company. We're like, oh, we're going to have the best shit. It's going to have ranges and helicopters and and ATVs and we're gonna go out and teach all this stuff. Cause that, that's every like tactical guy. That's like your dream when you get out, I'm gonna go run a range, be like nothing else. It's gonna be the baddest shit ever. But then we're like, okay, well, how much is a helicopter? How much is land? Like what are, what are the insurance, you know, problems with that? What are the licensing requirements of that? What's the EPA on the lead that goes down range? How do we do that? And once we looked at, at the logistics of it, we're like, dude, that's, you know, at least five to $10 million to even get it off the ground before we're profitable. We don't have anywhere near that. So that was off the table, but it's important that you look at that, like how much will it cost to start? Because there's some great ideas that can really work, but if they cost, you know, $5 million and you don't have it, you know, you can raise it, you can get it, there's ways to do it, but also um, it might be better to start looking at other ideas. Uh, number four is how profitable is it? Meaning is it information product where you might be 99% profitability with it because it's, you're just, there's no cost of goods. You're not having to ship it. It just gets emailed to somebody. And once it's made, <clears throat> there's no, um, there's no real cost to it other than hosting and sending via email, which is very cheap. Or is it something like manufacturing where you might be in, you know, five to 15% profitability range. And what does that look like? You know, are you, are you going to be having enough volume where that five to 15% is going to be you know, actually livable for you to pay for all your overhead, all your expenses, everything. Um, so like I said in the beginning, there's no right or wrong with this. It's, these are just things that you need to keep in mind anytime you evaluate an idea because everybody's in love with their own shit. And I've had so many ideas that I'm like, dude, this is the baddest. This is awesome. Everybody's going to love this. And once I run it through these filters, I'm like, dang, it's not as good as I thought it was. So 
uh, how profitable is it? And like I said, you can make anything work. It's just a matter of like how long it's going to take you, how the bandwidth you're going to have to spend on it, how much it's going to cost. Um, and the fifth thing, and this may be the most important, is what's the end state for it? What's the potentiality of the end of it, right? So and this is the first thing we always talk about. One of the first things we talk about with uh, new apparel brand clients is I always ask them like, okay, well, what do you want to do with this? Is this, you're starting a brand, do you want to own this brand forever? Do you want to be 55 and still be like the, the clothing brand guy running this brand? And usually the answer is no. So if the answer is no, we're like, okay, we have to look at some kind of exit plan, exit strategy for the, for the company, um, whether that's, you know, three years down the line, seven years, 15 years, whatever it is. But at some point you have to know that it's, it's going to be sold and not that you can't commit to it. And every, you know, every entrepreneurship, every entrepreneur knows that their brand is their baby, you know, and you never really go into it. I don't, I don't think you can actually commit the energy and the, you know, the mental space of your soul to build something. If you always have in your mind, Oh, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it. Cause it, it just dilutes that, that purity of soul with it. Um, but I do think it is, it is something that you need to keep in mind as it builds and grows that, um, like maybe you're hundred percent committed. You're the guy and you're front facing. It's all about you in the very beginning. And then you start to pull yourself out. You start to put other people up front. You start to have a team and, and employees and people who can be the front facing part of it for you. So that in, you know, five years, you can just be the owner and be removed. And now you have something that you can sell. That's not entirely like innately you. So just something to keep in mind is, is what's the end state of it. So to recap, number one, how big can you get it? Number two, how long will it take to reach profitability and, and scale? And three, how much will it cost to start Four, how profitable will it be at, you know, those beginning stages and at the end? And then five, how are you going to exit it? What's the end state for the product, the service, the business, the brand, whatever it is, the idea that you have. Um, so I find that, that once I run every idea through these five filters, I'm usually left with maybe like 5% of my ideas that are actually feasible and useful. Uh, so I found these, these filters to be very useful for me and, um, hope they help you guys.